This is the pitless adapter puller that's going to pull well pipe up. This is the T bar handle for the pitless that I made. It's one inch pipe, uh, 72 inches long, six foot. Has one inch T here, a couple of eight inch pieces. This prevents them if there's some sort of failure of the lifting rig to uh, prevent it from falling down the well casing here. A couple of caps to protect that handle. And uh, it's one inch pipe in the event that you have to pull one inch. My system here is uh, the pitless here is an uh, inch and a quarter. And so I've got a thread protector here, this cap. And of course, this is a bushing here. You can change it to whatever size you want. Typically, inch and a quarter, inch and a half uh, will do so. The pitless adapter uh, goes inside the well casing. And what it does is it uh, prevents or uh, frees up of the line by providing an outlet from the casing, which uh, this goes inside the casing. This is exterior to the casing uh, below uh, your freeze line, wherever you are in Missouri. It's uh, roughly 24 inches. I'm going to set this at a depth of two and a half feet. And of course, this will transition into galvanized pipe and whatever configuration uh, you have for your above ground piping. Mine's going to be simply a a utility hydrant and a full bore inch and a quarter pipe rather than you know your typical yard hydrants that are three quarter inches I want to have full flow to prevent any sort of back pressure from the two horsepower pump that's going to be at the bottom of this uh, well pipe down here down to a, a depth of about 260 feet so basically as this transitions through the well casing here and is connected here to your bump down piping this basically just pops into and you this is how you're going to pull your well pipe you're going to have the the uh, the handle uh, here screw in from the top of your your well casing down to this this pitless adapter and you're going to be able to pull this off of that that outlet this is a deadhead here okay? it doesn't do anything except except your pull pipe this of course is all of your pipe going down in your pump and that's going to pull the load up above the casing until you can get it clamped and of course start pulling it section at a time so that's basically the uh, the function of the pitless adapter to provide freeze protection um, and an outlet below your freeze line uh, wherever that may be uh, depending upon where you are geographically and like I said about the Midwest is typically uh, 24 inches so that's where we're gonna place ours about two and a half feet so we're, we're down below that so the inside part of the pitless adapter is this piece here and there's an o-ring that uh, fits inside this groove and is gonna seat up against the inside of your wall casing now this particular hole I drilled in this piece of test pipe was to make sure that this is gonna fit in my uh, actual installation of course you see it fits perfectly and this is gonna, the o-ring is gonna provide a seal on the inside of your wall casing uh, which is gonna be about two and a half foot down. Then of course there's an exterior gasket. It's going to provide some more uh, seal against any sort of groundwater infiltration into your well. And uh, it's going to fit like this with a backing plate that's going to push it up against the outside of the casing. This is curved of course to accommodate six inch and up. This is uh, happens to be a six inch piece of pipe as is our well casing. And it's going to fit of course you see how it fits there. It's going to fit and compress that gasket to provide two seals and of course there's a locking nut that is going to secure this whole thing and I'm just going to put it on loose but um, you see how that works and of course your outlet pipe which in this case is going to be an inch and a quarter out to a utility hydrant or whatever configuration that you have this is going to be a uh, uh, not a pressurized system but just a just an open atmospheric system it's going to push the water from a depth of about 260 feet from a two horsepower pump and I don't want any uh, back pressure or any line reduction so it's going to be uh, basically full bore one and a quarter all the way up from the pump to the utility hydrant outlet um, so once this is all secure in the, inside the well casing it's going to be lowered with this and pushed into the uh, through the hole by the T post that I made T-post adapter and it's going to get pushed in and then of course all of your well pipe is going to hang below this point and when you're finished installing it you basically just going to unscrew your T-post puller. This is a six inch well casing where we pulled a simple pump out a couple of days ago and uh, took the backhoe out and, and dug down 
to give us sufficient access or egress to the well casing uh, approximately two and a half three feet below uh, ground level where we we're going to uh, cut a two inch hole and uh, install the pitless adapter and of course uh, from the pitless adapter it's the outlet pipe that you saw on the uh, stand the pipe stand over there is going to come out three feet and we're going to dig down a little deeper to provide a, uh, a dry well because of course this is Missouri clay and, and water percolation or absorption is an issue here so I want to put a dry well in there uh, with an access point in case it gets filled up and, and uh, the uh, usage exceeds the capacity we're able to uh, pump out the water of the dry well uh, but it's one of those precautions you have to take when you're dealing with uh, soils or clays with very low percolation and drain rates and uh, otherwise it's going to totally defeat the idea of a of a uh, freeze protected uh, device such as the uh, utility hydrant that we're going to put in so let me get that hole drilled and we'll start installing that uh, pitless adapter One clean hole. You want to make sure that you uh, take a razor blade and, and cut off any burrs that are going to remain from the hole cutting process and run your finger inside and and uh, or a, a wet towel. Of course I'm kind of reluctant to put anything unnecessary inside the, the well casing in fear of dropping it down there by accident. Uh, things happen. Uh, but you want to make sure your sealing surfaces are, are sufficiently clean so that the inside o-ring and the outside gasket seal well. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, spin the inside of, of the pitless adapter onto our uh, T-post lifting rig here. And that's how we're going to insert it down into the well casing. And you just want to put it on there hand tight. Oh, the ring fell off and of course this is one of the things that you need to be concerned about uh, when you're lowering this into the well casing because you do not want to lose that o-ring and so you have to be extremely careful about doing so so this is going to have to be lowered vertically down into the well casing and I'm going to do that and I'm going to run this uh, outlet against the inside wall of the well casing to prevent this from falling out and uh, also to provide some friction because once we get it through the hole all we're going to be doing is pulling the t-post up once it's secured and of course you can see how this could potentially fall down into the well and you could lose it now they do have a safety <clears throat> uh, ring here where you can attach some wire or a string or something and then just pull it uh, off afterwards but I'm not going to use that uh, there's enough friction here in the device to, to hold it and stabilize it and if I keep it against the uh, well casing I shouldn't have a problem getting it into the hole and then putting the gasket and uh, backing ring and lock nut on there and then getting it secured properly okay so this is what it looks like with the pitless adapter the inside part on the bottom of the uh, t-post lift pipe here so I'm gonna go ahead and pick it up and set it inside and give it a little angle to keep it adequate pressure. And of course I'm going to stop the video here and use both hands because I can't see uh, where the hole is and the camera can't see down into the well pipe. So we'll show you what it looks like after. So we've just installed the uh, pitless adapter. The T-post is still in there. Uh, secured to the inside part of it. And you can see outside here <clears throat> where we've hand tightened the rubber gasket, the backing plate, and the, uh, the lock nut. So I'm going to get down there with a the wrench and put a couple of good turns on there and secure it properly. That's what the pitless adapter looks once it's installed. And now what I'm going to do, the, uh, the T-post is still in there because we're going to use that as leverage as we put the outlet pipe and connect it to the inside of these one and a quarter inch threads uh, to stabilize it so that the fitting, the pitless adapter doesn't turn while we're installing it. So that that uh, T-post is a stand pipe. It's going to act as leverage as we install a 36 inch piece of pipe out here to where the the dry well is going to be below it which is basically just a 55 gallon drum then I'm gonna cut the bottom of it out the top of it out and use it uh, the bottom part as a cover and it's, it's going to 90 up into the hydrant 
and so that's going to provide access for the hydrant to drain out and, and uh, uh, percolate into the, the rock, the dry rock or the dry well uh, below it. I just installed the outlet pipe, inch and a quarter galvanized steel, 36 inches long and 90s up. And of course, this is where the uh, utility hydrant, uh, the frost proof utility hydrant is going to screw into that. And it's got a five foot height to it. So two and a half is going to be buried and the other two and a half is going to protrude above ground level. Uh, give us access to water. So this is how I chose to configure our well. It's going to be for all intents and purposes non-pressurized. So we're going to have a big outlet hose that's going to fill cisterns, IBC totes, and provide us and our animals with water. So we chose to go that route so we don't have back pressure against the uh, two horsepower pump because it's down a considerable depth. And uh, what it does is reduce the cycling because it's not an automatic system. And the only time it'll be operable is when we turn it on. So we'll get the uh, the greatest longevity out of this setup. So I'm going to use this 55-gallon uh, poly drum here as my dry well. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn it upside down. The top is going to be the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and, and cut this all the way around and discard this and use this as a, you know, a patch piece possibly for the top to uh, to seal the, the hydrant um, opening. And the main body, of course, is going to be the dry well, and this is going to be the cover. Now, how is this going to sufficiently cover? I'm going to cut this end off here with a lip. How is this going to sufficiently cover the same diameter? Well, this uh, pipe piece, once I cut the top and bottom off, I'm going to split down, and then I'm going to stitch together, close it up together, so it'll fit inside here, and then just go ahead and bolt it up. And so that's going to provide me with the cylinder for the rocks. This is all going to be vertical uh, for the for the rocks uh, uh, to be filled in with. And of course the cover where uh, there's going to be a hole and the, the hydrant's going to come into the, the 90 and the outlet of the pitless adapter. So I've gone ahead and marked where I'm going to make these cuts. Of course this is going to be discarded and used for patch pieces and you'll see what I mean by that. This is the center piece and this is the, uh, the the score line or the mark that I'm going to cut it down the middle so I can fold it together and make it smaller so it's fit inside the cover here. Uh, I can tell you that the easiest way I've found to cut thick poly is to go ahead and score a slot with a grinder and then use... Uh, Porter Cable makes a pruning saw blade for a sawzall which is pretty aggressive and uh, it makes quick work out of these sorts of cuts otherwise you can be there for a long time and make a whole lot of dust and be very uncomfortable but you can see that the, the blade is pretty aggressive you can cut wood with this thing no problem two by fours four by fours for making pole barns uh, you, want, you want to limb out a, a branch or something like that this is a, a perfect tool because it makes quick work out of the whole situation so <laughs> Here's the main body of the drywall right there. You can see how I went ahead and bolted those seams together. Once the rocks on the inside and the clay and dirt's on the outside, even if those galvanized bolts do over a period of decades finally corrode away, the whole thing will be held in place. Um, I'm going to be putting a clean out inside the drywall as well. It's that piece of pipe right here with the uh, perforations. I drilled a bunch of holes in there. Basically kind of a well point or a clean out. And I'm going to put it uh, on the left side or in front of the utility hydrant that's going to be coming off of that 90. I've got it blocked with a piece of uh, plastic there so dirt doesn't get inside it. Just in case because of the quality of the clay in the soil here, uh, if the percolation is very low or non-existent, that during the cycling of the hydrant as it drains when it shuts off into the dry well that it, there's no freestanding water in there. If there happens to be then the clean out will allow me to drop a tube and pump out the water in the event that the percolation of the soil fails. So I'm hoping that's not the case but just in case that is then I can uh, I've got a remedy to that and I don't have to worry about the dry well backing up with water and freezing a very expensive piece of equipment. Okay, so as you can see, we've got it about three quarters full. I put a bag of uh, river rock, about three quarter aggregate or larger, in the bottom, and then I put the uh, clean out pipe with the perforations at the bottom. I inserted that, and then we went ahead and uh, filled it up with the river rock 
Uh, like I said, about three quarters full. We're going to go ahead and backfill around it a little bit to make sure that there's a uniform tension as we proceed up the elevation. And finally, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, cut some holes and put the covers on. Okay, so this is the cover over the drywall. And this is a hole about three and a half, four inches, sufficient for the uh, utility header to go in. I'm going to go ahead and drill the hole for the uh, clean out for the PVC uh, pipe. I, I believe it's two inch, but I'm going to make about a two and a half, three inch hole. Uh, a trick when you're dealing with holes and and when the pilot bit breaks through and suddenly makes contact with such a big surface, there's a lot of torque that gets transferred to your wrist and your hand, and you may hurt yourself. So what, one of the things that I do is I set the clutch on low, so as soon, but with sufficient power to grab the bit and drill the pilot hole. But as soon as it will uh, bear down on the surface, it will the clutch will engage, and you're not going to twist. And then you can go ahead and set the full clutch on there and continue to drill. So just a thought. yard hydrant actually technically utility hydrant because of it, its more commercial nature and commercial applications uh, heavy duty but this is the uh, weep hole down here so once the when this is vertical and uh, the valve is shut off this seat will uh, go past this weep hole and allow the pipe the riser pipe that's full of water to drain out here and that's the dynamic behind the frost proof uh, yard hydrants and valves is that uh, it's below the frost line and the water can drain out where the cold weather cannot uh, affect it and keep this empty when not in use so I'm gonna we'll go ahead and install this now okay so here's a look at the utility hydrant and the clean out installed and uh, looks pretty good so we're gonna go ahead and lower the cover right now and you can see what it's gonna look like And uh, from here, what we'll do is we'll take the uh, end that uh, we saved from the barrel and cut some pieces to go around and, and uh, seal that top off. And then we'll go ahead, we can go ahead at that point and backfill it. Here's another look at it from the top of the ditch. And the utility hydrant and the clean out. And of course, the uh, hole penetrations in the cover. We had to actually slide the cover up into the hydrant before we screwed it in place. And then when we had the cover up, we went ahead and put more rock in there and stepped on to make sure it was good and level before we put those patch pieces on top to cover those holes. You see the inlet there sufficiently covered. And uh, that'll prevent any dirt infiltration. I don't expect any problems with that since there's so much clay here that'll probably seal itself just fine and um, maintain, the integrity of the, the, maintain the integrity of the drywall. So this was the uh, top part of the drum that we cut out. I'm going to go ahead and make uh, two patterns here to be able to you see the pattern. I'm going to cut out two pieces to bring around the uh, inch and a half PVC clean out and of course the inch and a quarter galvanized steel pipe. Uh, to secure those I'll put four screws in each one and that will cover the tops of the, uh, the openings and should provide a sufficient seal. Maybe I'll throw a little bit of uh, landscape fabric if I have it. If I feel that it's uh, needed but I think it should have a, a sufficient uh, seal around both those pipes. Well aside from the uh, back filling we're just about done here. I went ahead and cut this clean out about eight inches above ground level sufficient for three or four inch pad and we'll slip a uh, PVC slip cover on there to prevent any water from getting inside that but the uh, covers worked out great and I'm not going to put anything else in it because we're going to go ahead and cover this with uh, a lot of clay so that's going to prevent any sort of uh, groundwater infiltration. I'm satisfied with this installation and uh, this completes our part of the uh, pitless adapter installation with uh, yard hydrant. We appreciate y'all coming by. God bless you.